Now we are here in Pagosa Springs, Colorado, and one of the most beautiful spots I think I've ever been in. This state is absolutely amazing. And we're, uh, we're uh, here today with Jason Doctor from 1983? 80, actually, March of 88. Oh, 88? You're later. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. 1988, were you in the new building? Uh, or was a transition from the it old It was to the right new? on McCaslin. Uh, that, okay. And, and so it was still a very small uh, deal. They, We had uh, the main floor, then the upstairs with all the practice rooms. And I don't know, I've heard that they've expanded or... Okay, then you were in the new building. Okay. That was... That was after um, uh, the uh, Wax Museum building, shortly after that we moved over there. So the new facility, which was a gem, it was really a nice one. So anyhow, uh, from PIT, which I think you were uh, uh, several years into it, what, what was your inclination to come to that school? Well, my, uh, my uncle actually, George, he went out to the Guitar Institute in 85. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, he... Uh, that was my my first deal and, and that's something you know i've always even when i was a little kid i was banging on stuff and finally when i i started fifth grade uh, a guy gave me a, just lessons started giving me uh -huh. drum lessons uh -huh. and um, so it just kind of went from there and then going through middle school and high school um i get you know different jazz awards and different things but um, i just knew that i needed to take it to that next level and my uncle um he says, you know, you got to go to the school. This is the best thing. Wow. And so I, uh, I sent in my, my tape wow. and I uh, got the, the correspondence back saying, you're good to go. And wow. uh, that was it. Oh. Okay. All right. So then you, it was Hollywood, because it's Holly weird, right? <laughs> and we weren't at the University of Southern California. Uh, you were in the new building, which had a lot more. The old building was kind of, well, was very funky. Uh -huh. But when you walked up there, did was that what you expected uh, as far as looking up and saying, oh, here we are, am I? I didn't even know what to expect. You know, I, uh, I'd i never seen that many people in my life. I grew up in rural Wyoming. Oh, and my gosh. How great. I went, you know, right into L.A., and uh, I was just blown away at just everything. I mean, just every, it was a sensory overload, but... Um, I just remember seeing all the all the guys, all the musicians. Everybody was that was cool was just hanging outside. They were either talking or smoking <laughs> cigarettes or whatever, talking, opening their books. I mean, I just remember that whole vision as I'm walking up. Just all the musicians out there. Everybody's just noodling on the guitars and out there, guys out there banging on their sticks and twirling it. Yeah, and, and it was how, just how'd you feel about that? I I was a little um, a little taken back, yeah. you know, because I'm thinking. You know, at, at that level, in th that point in life, I mean, you're, you're still trying to feel your way out. You're not really the most, I guess, uh, just outgoing and, and confident. Yeah. And, and so I was like, oh, my God, what am I getting into? And, and within a week, I mean, I was just right with them, you know. So, Jason, they got inside, and now you're inside that, that uh, labyrinth of practice rooms and uh, uh, what were those rubber drum Pads yeah. we had all this, <laughs> and I think I think you had uh, did you have the tachistoscope, the little thing that would flash notes on the screen? Did yes. It? Yeah. Yep. That was <laughs> that's what, another story. Yeah. <laughs> one of one of my one of my most difficult classes was the uh, the sight reading with Gary Hess. Gary Hess. Yeah. And uh, everybody, you know, it was all dark. It had the the overhead up there, <laughs> and with the metronome, you know, first when everybody was starting out, it was like this. Uh huh. You know, by the time you know, fourth. Uh, quarter came around you're and, up there <laughs> and everybody's just bah, 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 da, 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 you know just ripping through this thing and it was just an incredible experience oh my gosh uh, the tachistoscope was uh was in the uh from the second world war they used to um flash uh, uh, um, uh, airplane pictures on the screen so we'd identify enemy aircraft that's where that came from and then in my high school and uh, it was a, a sight reading, regular reading. And so I brought it into some high-tech stuff, into brand new stuff out of it. Anyhow, so, okay. Now, you mentioned Gary, which is also a graduate of the school. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of our graduates, probably if we'd kept you around, well, you'd be been one on the staff there. I'll ask you, maybe you've already done that one. But anyhow, so after Gary, now you had some of the greats in there. Oh, uh, yeah. Your two, right off the top with... Uh, 
Ralph and Joe. Uh, yep. How did you feel oh, about those guys? Oh, they were just amazing. You know, I had never, in, in terms of like Ralph Humphrey, yeah. I had never seen anybody with the independence or interdependence and just being able to talk and this hand's doing this, this hand's doing right. this and this and everything's playing different rhythms and different time signatures and he's talking like <laughs> like it. us, you know. <laughs> and you know, and it, it was just, I was just blown away and I think I was thinking to myself, I want to get to that point. Whoa, I need guys. to get to that point. And then when uh when I just sitting there and, and just watching Joe Picaro, he would the guy was just it's just uh, still it's just amazing you know i don't i don't even know if he's still playing anymore but um, probably not but he's still around but he uh you know he would say okay line line three and uh he would he would just sit down you know and line four like spot on every single one not not an inflection nothing that is off of what he is what is written right there and the guy was just oh just amazing just wow. amazing jazz player so that was uh, of the, those you just mentioned, Gary and the two, uh, you know, B, uh, student and two uh, founders of the of PIT, and their own curriculum, by the way. Oh, and, yep. uh, and Ralph and Joe, very different people, right? To you. Oh yeah. You know, Joe seemed to be more, a little bit more empathetic towards you. Ralph said, uh, "Sit down and work yeah. uh, hard." And Joe said, "He'll get it. He'll get it." Yeah. Didn't that, that seemed to be the case. So anyhow, Jason, uh, you lived in Hollywood. I, do you have one of those those great um, uh, apartments there you lived in? You know, I lived right at Cherokee and Yucca. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I had another place that I lived in when I first moved there. It was uh, Franklin and um, Cherokee, yeah. right up the road. Um, but yeah, it was uh, quite the experience. What did you uh, What did you think about uh, the, the classes and the teachers? Did you find any of those difficult, or were they all okay, easy for you? Or? Uh, you know, as soon as I got well, initially they were they were difficult because it was a whole new world I was thrust into, yeah. and everything was just going by like this. And um, once you get into that motion, uh, everything just you just roll with it. Wow. And um, Steve Houghton, uh, Efren, oh yeah. my God, Efren Toro, that was some of the the funnest classes. Um, and Chuck Silverman. Uh, rest yeah. in peace. Um, yeah, those are some of the greats. He's bringing back names. The, 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 these are the main uh, mainstay uh, instructors in this school. Casey Shirell. Casey Shirell. Sure. Oh, my God, yeah. Um, it, was there any visiting faculty that you kind of were looking forward to? Yeah, it's Steve Smith. Steve Smith, Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, Terry Bozio. Uh, Bozio, yeah. I'm not sure how he... Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just some incredible, incredible yeah. players. Wow. So overall, then it sounded like it was a, a good year for you. Yeah. And of all those instructors, was there any one that was kind of your favorite? If you, if you can single them out, because I know they were all your favorites. But yeah. Oh my God, that's that's such a difficult choice. Um, I would say Efren. Efren Toro. Efren Toro. Uh, tell uh, just a quick thing about Efren as a Latin percussion, right? Yes. Um, what I would say, why I think that Efren was probably my my favorite, is well, his personality and his approach to everything, and it was it wasn't just say, okay, this is it, you know, read the paper, this, read the note. It was like coming from here, oh, yeah, and yeah. so just like Clave, I tried, I tried to teach Wendy, my wife, Clave, and we walked around the house marching, going. So clave, um, and just that, and that's inherent in everything. That is yeah. inherent in everything. Yeah. So if you if you take on this, the the feel of the clave, and and take on the the heartfelt portion that over the top of the the technical aspect, I don't know. It's it's I, I think that's the best way. But Efren was just a master of, of doing that, and he mm. just made the whole thing fun. Efren was uh, from no, he's now at the University of Puerto Rico teaching there I believe last time last I heard still going strong okay so then now can you th can you think of an incident while you were there that would either made you laugh or made you cry or made you mad <laughs> anything like that well anything that stands out we were doing and I what was it called it wasn't the live playing workshop but it was uh, 
my little band got together and we played a song in front of the whole crowd. Ah. It was on the Friday and I, I, it's been so long, I, it's hard for me to remember. But I'm just, you know, panning this stuff out and I break the snare mic. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and I remember Owen, Owen uh, was the drum tech. I remember and, Owen, uh, yeah. Just an incredible player, by the way. Um, and he was mad at me and I just felt so bad. And, <laughs> but, you know, things happen. The things happen. Or what's it? Uh, I won't use the word, but something happens when that happens, <laughs> right? Do, oh, I know I can say it, can I? Shit happens. <laughs> Jason, so uh, after you got out of school, after you that graduation, uh, what did you do? What happened to you? Well, I, uh, I moved back to Wyoming and then moved down into Colorado, started playing in various little bands, and I finally went to the University of Colorado at Denver, and I studied music as well as performance major. Um, and uh, in that whole process, I got involved with a band called Melange, and it was more like jazz, Latin fusion stuff. Mm. And we played all over the Southwest. Wow. And we played down in Santa Fe, and then we came up to play the Archuleta County Fair here in Pagosa. Mm -hmm. and, I, and we were living in Denver at the time. And uh, I said, you know, if we ever change our home base, let's move here. And a year later, the whole band moved down here. All right. <laughs> so did that for a while. Um, that band moved to Santa Fe. I loved it so much here, which, you know, those that have been through here will agree that this is beautiful country. Um, I played in other numerous bands where we opened for national acts, played up at Sturgis up in South Dakota, played, out, I mean, opened up for a lot of big names. And in that process, I got a call from my friend. He it was a booking agent for this country music artist. And he said, this guy has fired his band and he's looking for people that can play at a national level. Would you be interested? I said, sure, send me the music. And the next day, the music was in my inbox. I listened to it. The, the country music artist's name was Haas Howard. Uh, he was based out of Asheville, North Carolina. He called me up. We talked for a little bit. They were coming through with another drummer and they were playing up in Denver. And I went up there and sat in and they pretty much hired me on the spot. Wow. And <laughs> so. I ended up going on the road with these guys playing all over the country and uh, playing some from little, small little bars to opening for a lot of different big wow. national acts. So here we are in uh, 2014, 30 years later. <laughs> Good Lord, where the years go? What, so what do, what do you do now musically? I have a band which um, I have handpicked some of the best players in this region. It's called Faculty X or The Faculty X and it's uh, straight up jazz fusion latin funk reggae okay and it's um i got some really good players in this project mm. and we're playing locally i also play with another band called nucka which is a, like country punk <laughs> a high energy <laughs> oh my god throw yourself around and uh it's it's pretty fun stuff and uh th that's basically it you know mm. play with various people that come through or mm. that need uh a hired gun, but that's well, what it, you're an in-demand drummer, boy. I'll tell you. So uh, playing music, but uh, like so many of my grads over the years, I continue with music, but also get kind of little day job things going, uh, just for the heck of it, or just to add money to the the family. You were you and Wendy were telling me about uh, uh, what I thought was an incredible, uh, surprising little project. Yep. you're doing could you take, tell us a little bit about that well uh what i've had going on for the the past eight years i have a hardwood floor company that he started and i was able to actually run that while i was still on the road with the country music artist and just over the years that's grown and 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 uh, i built it up it is actually allowing us now to purchase a, a building downtown which we're going to try to convert to a bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast, fantastic. And uh, yeah. there are still some things um, that have to go through. And uh, it's not a particularly new building, right? No, it's uh, <laughs> 120, years 120 years old. old. Yeah. Wow. So what a project. And and you're still uh, you got the energy to do it because yep. you got a lot of work yep. cut out for you. That's great. Well, Jason, a little later we're going to ask you, talk you into playing a little bit for us, and they'll get an idea of what you've been talking about for the last 20, 30 minutes here. Uh, but you had a story uh, earlier about the drum set in there. It's a gorgeous drum set. I've never seen one like it. 
Could you tell us a little bit about how that happened and what you were doing with that drum set? Sure. Um, I bought that. It was a Premier Signia kit, and it was uh, 300 made, and they're made in England and 300 worldwide. So there's very few in the United States. So it's a very limited edition with its number on the bass drum. Everything's numbered. And it's just an incredible sounding kit. I was on the road with Haas Howard. Uh, the recession hit, so, and this was back in 2009, the drums actually got put in a storage unit out there. I called the steel player and the guitar player and the, uh, the now drummer, which he was the guitar player and bass player at some point in the band too, very multi-talented mm. people out there, to go pick these drums up for me and have them ship it out here. Well, they show up to the, to the uh, storage unit and the drums are gone. Oh, and I'm like, oh my God! And this is this is out basically in Cherokee, North Carolina. Oh. And uh, so there's a few people that are they think it might be. Anyway, long story short, the keyboard player calls me, Keith Hightower calls me, and uh, this is probably about six months later, and says, on Craigslist, Asheville, I think these are your drums. Ooh. So we, I looked online, saw them, they were my drums. Because I had a, two of them here, and it's a complete kit. Mm. And this was only those left pieces. Wow. And uh, so I called the, the investigator out there. Mm. They went and set up essentially a sting. Mm. They picked these drums up. The guy's like, wait, wait, I bought these from a pawn shop. Mm. Well, they followed the paper trail, found out that these, these folks that took them to the pawn shop were the same ones that we thought along all along it was in anyway nothing happened to them slap on the wrist but the drums were in police impound for over a year wow. i just got those back last week you're kidding last man. week last tuesday so jason a uh, couple uh, last questions you came up through the ranks as a kid and started very young and so forth and then, uh, then, as far as advice for other youngsters coming up, maybe uh, your age or maybe a little older, what would you rec What would you? What would be your advice to them? Would you suggest this school? Although no crass commercialism here, but would you? What would you? Do, what would you tell them? Well, not so much at school. You uh, about what should they be looking, trying to do? What kind of studying should they be working on? I would say to to study to practice everything that you don't know. That's one of the first things I remember the instructor saying when I, the first day I was there, practice what you don't know, don't practice what you know. So apply your style, figure out what your style is and play everything, play jazz, play Latin, play funk, play rock, play double bass, whatever, play metal, whatever, and just apply everything, apply different um, techniques to your hands, practice your feet to your hands, Singles, double strokes, paradiddles, everything. Excellent. Practice everything. Excellent. <laughs> Just work hard, right? <laughs> work hard. There's no you shortcut, know? is there? Woodshed. Yeah, you bet. Okay, you. so okay. I think uh, we pretty much got it covered here. Uh, um, what a great interview this guy is. I could have just shut up and let him talk, right? But he's uh, he's up against a formidable uh, <laughs> adversary here. Who talks the most? And I think you and I are pretty good there. So. Anyhow, we're, uh, we're going to take a break here, and then I would ask and ask uh, uh, if you would consider a, a little playing for us. I will. Yeah, you know, maybe two, three hours worth. No, that's okay. Just a quickie. That'd be good. Okay. Well, folks, um, thank you all for looking in on us here in Pagosa Springs, Colorado, probably one of the most beautiful spots on this earth, and we are very pleasure, uh, uh, happy that we're here doing it. So that's it. We'll see you next time, and keep an eye out for this on YouTube. We'll have all uh, Jason uh, uh, Jason's interview here for us. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you, Jason. Bye. <laughs>